Good morning, folks. If you're not awake, you're about to be. We're hands taped, laced up, and swinging this morning with several top-level breakthroughs and understanding. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, where things were mostly quiet, but back at Earth, didn't matter one bit. That departing coronal hole had set its solar wind our way three days ago, and it arrived overnight, triggering a level 3 geomagnetic storm, KP7. No, this was not expected by anyone. The solar wind enhancement also leaves one wondering what happened as none of the telemetry was too intense. Folks, nobody can say for sure if the stream was terribly misjudged or if Earth's magnetic field had a weak moment in its ongoing decline. Remember, it is declining on the long term, but day to day it's like the stock market. Good days, bad days, up and down. The solar wind data from satellites does suggest the second one. We had one of those in March of 2011 as well, if you'll recall. Way more geomagnetic forcing than expected given the solar wind, unless it was a rough day for Earth's magnetic field. For those careful observers who caught the filament release near the southern polar crown, it was sizable, did produce a CME, but it looks like it's going to just miss the Earth. More filaments do abound, but right now let's get an update on Earth's rotation speed. Background is that it's been anomalously speeding up, with the need for leap seconds disappearing as every year came in milliseconds long, except the last two. And we're expected to not only break that record with a faster year this year, but we're expected to shatter the fastest day on record this summer, a record which 2020 broke 28 times. Remember, while the days grow slightly shorter, long before any human could possibly notice those milliseconds, the crust and mantle boundary will notice, unlocking, heaving, and shifting. Folks, let's jump back in time to remind everyone that Earth's winds are speeding up too. And that is so, so, so not what was expected. They are noticing that some of the areas most ripe for wind slowdowns are reversing that character, and governments around the world are changing wind-based safety requirements. By the way, there are tons of papers we've shown on geomagnetic and solar forcing of Earth winds, and at the peak of storm moments overnight, I caught dozens of places around the globe with faster than expected wind speeds. None slower. Lastly, folks, we've got a double. Geomagnetic forcing of both the polar cap in the mid and low latitude ground level magnetic field. And the subauroral polarization streams are able to rapidly force low latitude conditions too. A global effect in short time. Whether it's mild space weather or super geomagnetic storms, this pattern holds. And this rapid total globe forcing is a major breakthrough of the last few years. With a little preview here of page 40 in the Observer Supplement. The solar forcing over the life of the geomagnetic storm is still absent from climate models. This rapid forcing of the entire globe? Something they're still trying to keep hidden away in their nightmares, far from public modeling of the climate effect. In Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, it's a ton of information on solar forcing of wind, and a lot more. The crust and mantle unlocking is described in the next end of the world, and all the latest updates to all of it since 2020 are found in the supplement the preview you got today. Pre-order now at otf.cells.com. This is the last day those pre-orders will come signed. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.